Hello, Professor Toybox here, along with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and we're back in my Fantasia Toy Box for our next episode of Toy Box Tutorials. Last time, we looked at the rail target point over there, and before we get to today's lesson, I want to clear up a little confusion about it. After my last episode aired, I received several comments and notes from people wanting to know if the rail target point was limited to rail slides, or if they could use it for other things. You absolutely can use it for anything you want. The name that the Disney Infinity developers gave the toy is a bit misleading, unfortunately, but it's not limited to rail slides. You can connect it to a path, you can place it on a Star Destroyer or a building that you want to blow up, or whatever else you can think of to do with it, just like the normal target. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to use three rail target points in my lesson today and they won't be attached to any rail slides whatsoever. Now, a few weeks ago, I had hooked up two of the normal targets over here to lower the drawbridge, and I connected them to the bridge using a dual action trigger, and the player has to hit both targets in order to lower the bridge. And that's great, but the dual action trigger has a limitation. It only works with two toys. So what do you do if you want to use more than two toys to trigger something? And that brings us to our topic for today's lesson, the logic and. And once again, you'll find this toy in the Creativa Toys drawer once you purchase it from the toy store. And I'll go ahead and put one down over here behind the fortress. This time, Mickey's going to need to hit three targets in order to make something happen. But before we get to that, Let's take a closer look at the properties for this. There's one property. It's called Auto Reset, and it's off by default. And what this is, is uh, once this toy has received a signal from all of the toys that will be connected to it, it'll trigger a trigger signal to get broadcast, similar to the dual action trigger. And if you want to have it automatically reset itself after that happens, you can turn this on. Otherwise, you can leave it in the off position. And so I'll leave this in the off position. And if you do leave it off, then what you have to do is hook another toy up to it. And for right now, I'm just going to use this little button up here to demonstrate. So we'll do a new logic connection when pressed. And I'm not actually going to hook this up, but just so that I can open this menu up. So there's two behaviors you can direct this toy to do. One is input. So all of the toys that you hook up to the logic and would be coming through the input. So if you've got two targets like the uh, dual action trigger, instead of connecting to input one and input two, you're just connecting to a signal called input. And uh, so if you got three or four or however many, they come through there. The other one is reset. And so I can connect a button or a trigger area or something else up to this toy to reset it. And I'll cancel out of this. And alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you can have it automatically reset itself with the property. So that's what that does. And then the last thing is the new logic connection. So there's one trigger signal this will broadcast, and that is complete. So once all of the toys that are connected up to the input behavior have fired, that will cause this toy to fire or broadcast the complete signal. And so that's how the logic AND works, and it's pretty straightforward. So let's use this toy to connect three rail target points to make something happen. And what I'm going to do, I've set up a little floating island out here, an additional one. And as you can see, it's sitting six blocks out away from the castle. So I put those in there just so you can see the measurement. And I'll take these out now. And this piece here, if I go ahead and move it, is the large rounded cliff. And I've got two of them back to back with a button sitting on top. And so Mickey needs to reach this island in order to do something, which I'll talk about next week with that button. But for today, let's, focus on, let's just focus on reaching that island. And so we'll come back out to the Creativa Toys drawer. And I'm going to scroll left first because I'm going to need a replayer as well. This is how we're going to reach that island. So I'll put this down here and I'll get back to that in a minute. 
And then let's go ahead and drop three rail target points. So I'll scroll back over here to the right. And whoops, pick that up. So I'm going to set one of them temporarily right out here. And I'll drop it right there. And then I'm going to set two more up on top of this tower. And I'll center them on the tower. Just like that. And then let's go ahead and make one of them move. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a uh, path creator tool here, and let's put this up about like that. And we're going to come over here. I'm going to try to set this up in something of a circular path. I think that should have come down a little further. I'll fix that in a moment. Oops. Exit. <laughs> Helps if you hit the right buttons. Okay, let's drop this one down. Kind of want to make this circular so it's a little bit more predictable. Drop that a little further. And then we'll go ahead and close the loop. So under the properties, I'm going to set the looped flag, and I'll leave auto start objects when connected on. So the only thing I changed there was the loop flag. And that looks like a good circle. So let's go ahead and attach the rail target point to that with a new path connection. Didn't actually demonstrate that last week. But there it is. It's attached to the path, and it's going around the path. So that's good. Okay. So now we've got three targets, and we've got one of them attached to a path. Let's go ahead and connect them up to the logic and. and so Mickey will have to hit all three of these in order to trigger some behavior. So we'll do a new logic connection when hit. And I'll come over to the logic and. And we'll do an input. And then we'll come over to this one, and let's see if I can catch it as it's coming around. Nope. <laughs> One more try. Might have been a good idea to hook this up before I attached it to the path. There we go. So we'll do a new logic connection when hit. Come down to the logic and and do an input. So there's not a different signal for each of the toys, unlike the dual action trigger. They all connect up to the same thing. So last one. When hit. Come down to logic and, and input. All right. And then on the logic and, when all three of those have been hit, we would do a new logic connection. When complete, because that's the signal that it will broadcast when everything connected to that input signal has fired. And I'm going to come over to the replayer and do a playback. And, uh, whoops, let's go ahead and set the properties on the replayer first. So we'll come in here, and I want to set the playback interval to zero. And now we'll come out of the editor. And I'm going to step on the replayer, which will open the menu in the lower right, and start recording. Step off so I can get back in the editor. And then I'm going to come down to the gameplay toys drawer, and... Uh, <laughs> or platforming toys, and it reset the drawer on me. So I gotta scroll over to the right. Fortunately, I don't have to go too far. And we're gonna set up some clouds that will allow us to get over to that island. And these are from the um, Inside Out playset. And let's see, I'm gonna put uh, one of them here, and one of them over here, and another one like that. So three of them there. And the next one will come off the corner of the tower. So right here. And like that. 
And I like to put down these clouds with the replayer. We haven't talked about the clouds before, but one thing you'll notice is you can't select them <laughs> with spark mode. And I don't believe I can even select them with the magic wand. Although I haven't actually tried that, so let's go ahead and see if we can do that. That would be good to know. So I'll select the magic wand. And yeah, it's not letting me actually select. Oh, there we go. So that's how you can select a cloud. Because spark mode doesn't let you do that. So that's good to know. Hey, even I learned something new today. Because my problem I've always had with those is I put them down and then I have no way to remove them or move them if I need to tweak things a little bit. But that's good to know I can use the magic wand. All right, then we'll step back on the replayer and I'm gonna press B again on my Wii U to stop recording and A to clear. All right, so to recap, we have three rail target points connected to a logic and, so I have to hit all three of those in order to trigger the logic and to tell the replayer to play back, which will put the clouds up there, which will allow me to reach that island. So if we come out over here, when Mickey gets to the island, and he enters, we'll see a target moving around. And if we try to shoot it, it's kind of hard to do because it's up high, and I did that intentionally, but if he were to actually shoot that, nothing actually happens. And so player's got to move around a little bit, and when he climbs up the stairs and up the wall, you'll notice that there are two additional rail points, rail target points here. So then if we hit those, oop, that one didn't actually go. <laughs> There it goes. <laughs> that was a little bit of a chore. But we've hit all three. That caused the logic and to trigger the complete signal, which caused the replayer to put down the clouds. And so now Mickey has a way to get over to that island. So we can hop across these, and you'll notice they dissipate as he lands on them, so you have to be kind of quick. You can't linger too long, or he'll end up falling which isn't a problem as long as he's over the fortress, but as soon as you get out here, there's nothing under him. <laughs> and there we go. Now we've made it across, and now Mickey's able to use this button, which I'll show you next time what this is going to do. So you can see we were able to use the rail target points in a way that didn't involve a rail slide at all, and we were able to connect all three toys to the replayer using the logic and, so that Mickey had to hit all three targets to make the clouds appear. Next time, I'll set up a button on each of the floating islands, in addition to this one, that, when pressed, will give the player the combination to the color pressure plate puzzle that I built a few weeks ago. Until then, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope today's video was helpful for you. These tutorials take a while to put together, and that doesn't include all the planning I had to do a year ago to design a toy box that uses most of the creative toys. So if you appreciate this tutorial series and all the work that's gone into it, I'd be grateful if you give it a like and leave a comment to let me know. I appreciate the encouragement. And if you like Disney Infinity and you like my channel, I encourage you to subscribe by clicking my photo in the lower right corner. And as long as you have your notifications on, you'll know whenever I upload a new Disney Infinity video. For now, Mickey and I are signing off, and I'll be back tomorrow with the next episode of my brand new Disneyland series. Take care.